Become a Dangerville member to support the channel and gain access to all these exclusive perks. Click join now to check out your options. What's up residents, Alistair here and we're back with some really interesting news regarding the upcoming live action Godzilla TV show that's coming to Apple TV+. We'll be going over all the leaked set images which gives us an insight into how the world functions with the knowledge that Godzilla could rise out of the ocean at any point. And we'll look into how likely it is that we're going to see the King of the Monsters in the show. Also, a brand new official look at the series, stock full of hidden secrets. Buckle in residents, let's get to the news! Welcome back. Courtesy of KDM, we have recently revealed set leaks from the upcoming Godzilla series, which gives us a look at the Japan set piece which looks to be where a significant portion of the series will take place. Based on these leaks, it's looking like the tone of the show will be following that of the 2014 film, more grounded, realistic and character based, which I'm all for because that's easily my favourite Godzilla film, if not all time film. They seem to be doing the same thing with Andor, the upcoming Star Wars series where it's trying to recreate the tone of the cinematic release it's spinning off from. But what's weird is that neither of these shows are being assisted by Gareth Edwards, who directed both Rogue One and Godzilla 2014, which is kind of odd. I know he's currently getting ready to make a new film, so perhaps he was just too busy, but it would have been nice to see him return to direct even just one episode. In some of these photos, we actually see that Japan has built emergency Godzilla shelters, obviously based on fears that Godzilla could wander through their town at any moment. This is great world building and really helps the King of the Monsters have a presence even when it's not on screen. What I loved about 2014 was that Godzilla was more than just the giant monster, he was the earthquakes, the floods, a walking natural disaster. So to see that Godzilla essentially haunts the minds of those he's effective really makes the events feel more impactful. Hopefully this only scratches the surface of the world building that we'll be seeing in the show. Perhaps we'll see the seafood prices have skyrocketed due to fears of Godzilla sinking oceanic transport vessels, or perhaps people have moved away from the sea as much as possible to avoid the immediate destruction from Godzilla making landfall. In the next image, we actually see an action scene being filmed, with a green screen on the side of the road in Japan. This is either going to be a flashback to 2014 or even a modern day attack from Godzilla or something completely new. Either way, this is an indication that there will be some heavy VFX in the series, a sign that Godzilla may in fact attack Japan. And if that's the case, it will be the first time we actually see the King of the Monsters invade his homeland in the MonsterVerse. What I'm curious about is how it will affect the lore, since in Godzilla King of the Monsters it was stated he wasn't seen since 2014. Perhaps there was a big cover-up, which could be likely considering the show is about monarch and government secrets. Although the show is said to explore trauma since there are characters that were in San Francisco during G-Day, the MonsterVerse's term for the day Godzilla came ashore. My theory is that one of the characters is having a traumatic episode from the PTSD, and could very well be seeing Godzilla and the Mutos attacking around her in a frightening flashback. This would mean the lore isn't affected, but we still get heavy VFX shots. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. Finally, we have some fresh news that was revealed yesterday from Legendary over on Twitter, who posted this cryptic image of what appears to be some kind of satchel with the tweet stating the Norse rune for dawn plus apple equals clapperboard. Obviously, this is actually saying it's for the Monarch Apple TV series, but what actually is in the image? Well, of course, we see the Monarch logo on the bag, but it looks quite different, which could be a sign of its age. And across the table are various photos which appear to be mappings of uncharted lands, a river, a dormant volcano, and various other images. The calculator in the corner is Japanese, which indicates the satchel was given to our main characters by someone who works for Monarch. My guess is that this satchel was recovered from Skull Island and that one of our main characters is related to someone who ventured out there in 1973. 
The sheer age and wearing on the bag, as well as the military green material, support that this was brought to Skull Island by the team. If Legendary is showing this to us, I'm sure it's going to be of big importance to this series. Well, that's all we have for today. Which bit of news is getting you hyped up the most? Let us know in the comment section down below. Personally, I love the world building that's being presented for the show. It's really going to expand the series into a true, real monsterverse. To keep up to date on all the Godzilla and Kong news, subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. Don't forget to like this video because it lets us know what you want to see more of. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.